Hello, I'm Steph. Welcome to Hopeful Heights. Let's talk today about eggs. I have this huge basket of eggs here that I need to do something with. We have about 30 to 35 laying hens in our flock right now. I'm always hatching new eggs and replenishing my flock, but we get lots of eggs and we eat a lot of eggs. So we do go through them pretty quickly, but we always have some extra eggs around. And a lot of times I will just take them over to my in-laws house and share with them. I share with friends, but today I am going to be taking our extra eggs and preserving them for the winter. Right now it is the end of August. So we are getting to the end of summer where before you know it, the days are going to be shorter and colder weather is upon us. A lot of times, hens will either slow down in their egg laying or completely stop laying eggs over the winter. We live in zone 6B and I've had a pretty wide range of experiences with my hens over the winter over the last five years since we first got into chickens. So I think the first couple of years actually my egg production didn't drop off at all. My girls kept laying all winter long. It was awesome. But then I had a couple of years where production just slowed down. And somewhere in the last five years, I did have one year where we were not getting any eggs. And once you get used to farm fresh, like truly free range, truly pastured eggs, and that's, that's what our chickens are. They're true free, free range chickens. We have a lot of property here and they have full run of the farm. So they're not caged up at all. So we get those bright, rich orange yolks and super fresh eggs. And once you get used to that, it's really hard to go back to store bought eggs. Also, if you guys hear a sound in the background, that is my pressure canner steaming. It's starting to build up steam. I have green beans in there right now, but just ignore that. We're gonna focus on the eggs for right now. Now, the method that I'm going to show you today for preserving eggs is, in my opinion, the easiest method and probably I think definitely the cheapest method. We are going to be preserving eggs in lime water. Sometimes this is called water glassing, but when you use lime water to preserve eggs, that's actually not the same as water glassing. Water glassing involves water and sodium silicate, but today we're going to be using lime. Now the lime that I have right here, this is hydrated lime. I actually just had my husband bring me home a huge 50 pound bag of it because he works in construction and they use hydrated lime for their job sites sometimes. So I just had him bring me home a bag and he told me I had to leave it in the garage because he said it's really messy and, and he didn't want me to bring the big bag in the house. So I just went out and got a scoop and this will be plenty for what we're going to do today. But hydrated lime goes by many different names. It's also called slaked lime, um, calcium hydroxide. So you can, you can look that up. And probably most commonly, it's referred to as pickling lime. So yes, the Mrs. Wages, little bags about this big, Mrs. Wages pickling lime, same thing, except um, for, for a bag of Mrs. Wages, I think it's gonna be like seven or eight bucks for just a little bag, as opposed to the 50 pound bag that John brought home for me that I think cost maybe like 10 bucks and it will last forever and ever and ever. So where you source your lime is really just up to you. If you are more comfortable just ordering a little pack of Mrs. Wages pickling lime, then that's fine. Otherwise you can go to your local hardware store. I did check like Ace Hardware near us. They have it in stock, but um, you know, like Home Depot, Lowe's, those kind of places and just ask for hydrated lime or slaked lime. That is all you need, that and distilled water to preserve your eggs in lime water. All right, now for this method of preserving eggs, this is very important. You cannot use eggs that have been washed. So that means that you cannot use store-bought eggs because all store-bought eggs have been washed. And when you wash eggs, it removes the protective outer layer called the bloom. You can't really see the bloom on most eggs, um, but it's there and unwashed eggs with bloom intact will keep for a lot longer. So to do this method of preserving eggs in lime water or water glassing eggs, 
the bloom must be intact, the eggs must be unwashed. So if you have your own flock, then this is really easy. You just bring your eggs in and don't wash them. But if you're getting your eggs from a farm somewhere, make sure to ask or request that the eggs are unwashed because you just don't know their handling practices unless you ask. Another thing is you do not want to use dirty eggs. The eggs that you use for this process need to be clean, okay? So like here's a good example. This egg is nice and clean, but it has the bloom intact. It has not been washed. Let me show you an egg that I would not want to use. Okay, so this egg, ugh. see, it has like poop and dirt or, dirt, or what? I think it's actually mud. Yeah, muddy egg here, it's just dirty. This is not a good egg for preserving this way. If you wanna store your dirty eggs long-term, the best option is to put them in a carton and store them in the fridge and then wash them before you use them. Or if you have a freeze dryer, then you could wash them and then freeze dry your eggs. However, freeze dryers are very expensive. I do not have a freeze dryer. I would love to have one. I just don't have one. So my dirty eggs, I will probably just wash and use right away or wash them and store them in the fridge. So I'm just using the clean eggs for this method. All right, so I've got my unwashed clean eggs and we already talked about lime. The next thing you'll need is just some kind of container. So I think the cheapest route would be just to use what you have but if you have like a five gallon bucket you could just use a five gallon bucket and you could fit okay if i know you can fit let's see maybe 30 to 40 eggs in a gallon so yeah like 100 over 100 eggs you could probably fit in a five gallon bucket and you could store them that way today i'm just going to be using a gallon jar because it's clear and then you guys can kind of see inside as i fill this with eggs and lime water and see the whole process see what it looks like but you don't need a clear container any jar, any bucket will do. You can even, I've even seen people use like a stoneware crock, anything that you can put a lid over top. When you are going to preserve your eggs this way, you want them to be the pointy end facing down, okay? So you want the pointy end down inside your container. I am actually going to put my lime water in here first and then I will put my eggs down in there. Another reason I'm doing that is because if any of these eggs float, then I will take them out. I don't wanna store them long-term because eggs that float might be bad. They might be bad. The float test is a great way to test eggs to see if they are potentially bad. Maybe it means they just have like a little hairline um, crack that's allowing some air in there, or maybe it means the egg is a little bit older and it's kind of iffy. But the float test has always rang true for me, meaning when I put eggs in water, if they sink, they're good. If they float, they're bad. And I, I do crack them op open afterwards to see and usually the ones that are floating are bad. The, eggs, the yolks are really runny and they just kind of have smell to them. So those eggs go to the pigs. So like I said, the first thing I'm going to do is fill this jar with water and lime. I will show you guys the ratio. Then I'm going to add my eggs. The ratio that you want to use is one ounce of hydrated lime or pickling lime, calcium hydroxide, whatever you guys want to call it. One ounce of this to every one quart of water. So I am using a gallon jar. There are four quarts in a gallon. However, I'm not going to fill this entire jar with water because think about it the eggs are going to displace water so then the water would just be coming out the top and going everywhere we'll do two quarts okay we'll fill this with a half a gallon halfway full with lime water and then we will put our eggs in and you know if it ends up being too much water and it runs over the top that's fine i'll just hold it over the sink and let it run out but i know my ratio will be correct so if i want to fill this gallon halfway full which is two quarts then i need two ounces of lime so i'm just gonna go ahead and weigh that out right now one minute i realized my pressure was way too high on my green beans all right so one ounce was about a half a cup of hydrated lime so since i need two ounces i have about about a cup of lime here but once again you don't want to measure that you do want to weigh it so you get your ratio right so now i'm going to put this in my gallon jar and then put two quarts of water in there before I start adding my eggs. Another 
thing is you want to use distilled or highly filtered water for this process. So definitely if you are on like city water or well water, don't use that. Make sure that you have really good filtered or distilled water. All right, I'm going to add this into my jar here that has the lime in it already. Okay, now I can start adding my eggs. It is as simple as this, you guys. And another thing I wanted to mention, so if you don't have as many chickens as I have, and let's say you're maybe just getting a few extra eggs a day, but you still want to do this method, you don't have to fill this all up at once. So, you know, let's say I had two or three extra eggs right now. I could put those in here and put the lid on, set it to the side and then tomorrow add two or three more and keep going until my jar was full so you don't have to wait until you have a ton of extra eggs you can start this at any time if you want to be tucking eggs away for storage for over the winter just in case and while we're talking about just in case guys let me tell you something in case you haven't noticed we are dealing with a little bit of an inflation problem right now Eggs, the price of eggs are up 47% since last year. Gosh, I remember, it's been a few years since I bought eggs at the store, but I used to be, I'm still an Aldi shopper, but I used to get all my eggs from Aldi. Um, they weren't special eggs, they were just eggs from Aldi. And they were 89 cents, 89 cents, you guys. That's what it was just a couple of years ago. But anyway, just in one year, they've the price has almost doubled. And if you guys watch any kind of news or anything you guys know this isn't conspiracy this is just fact these are just news stories you know there is a lot of talk of food scarcity and insecurity this winter in the coming months even the government is recommending that we have a few months of preps and when it comes to food preparedness i am more of an ingredient prepper i don't worry about having like prepackaged meals and all the frills and all of the things that i might ever want as long as i have a few staple ingredients tucked away i'm fine if i have salt flour and water i can make bread because with flour and water i can make a sourdough starter which is just yeast and if i have yeast and more flour and water and a little bit of salt, I can make a loaf of bread. And if we have bread, then we can eat. And if we can eat, then we're fine. And if we have water to make the bread, then we have water to drink. And if we have water and bread, we're fine. So you guys, it, I, I could live on very, very little. Most of our food is cooked from scratch and we, I make very simple meals with simple ingredients that we can could source locally or grow here. I still use the grocery store, guys. I use the grocery store all the time. But what I'm saying is I've learned skills that if I needed to survive on very little, I could. So things that I think about storing are, like I mentioned, flour, salt, uh, you need a way to have clean water. I have a Berkey. That's how I actually filtered the water for this. And that is my plan. Let's say if the power would go down for even just, you know, a tornado or something or something weird, power would be out for a weekend. We would have clean water because we have our Berkey and Berkey filters last for a few years. But some other things that I store, uh, let's see, yeah, flour, salt, water, sugar, rice, white rice is a great one that lasts for a really long time. Baking soda, baking powder. Um, eggs, a lot of recipes call for eggs and eggs are just especially the good pastured, like true free range eggs are such a great source of all kinds of nutrition, great protein source, great source of fat. So eggs is just another great thing to have tucked away just in case, because you never know when this wouldn't just be a matter of preference, like preferring having really good, rich, free range eggs over store bought eggs, but it might actually be a necessity. I hope that never happens. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe all the sources are wrong and this winter is going to be great and fine and nothing is going to happen. We're not going to have any signs of food shortage. I hope so guys. That would be awesome. But you just never know. And there are a lot of signs there saying that we should be thinking about preparedness. Thinking back to that big 50 pound bag of lime, I know that for years to come I will have the materials that I need. If I have clean water, I've got storage containers and I've got that lime and I can store eggs away for the winter for many years to come. Let's get back to preserving eggs. So I've got my lime water here. All I have to do now is put my eggs down in here. That's 
that's it guys. That is it. I fit 37, 38. I kind of lost count after I started, but then I only had a few in there, so I was able to count and I was like 12 in, but about 37, 38 eggs in this jar. And it is so pretty. I've got all different colors, color of eggs. So I kind of want to use this as a decoration. I have some cabinets with glass fronts, and I think it would be so pretty to just line up these jars of eggs. They store longer if you store them out of direct sunlight. And so while my cabinets aren't in direct sunlight, I don't know. Maybe I should, shouldn't do it. I don't know, guys, I'm not really sure. So it would probably be best to follow general storage rules and store these in a cool, dark place. But I think I might still put them in my glass cabinets because the success rate at eight months out, so eight months after you initially store eggs, the success rate is 100%, meaning all of your eggs will still be good. Now, after eight months, that rate might start to slowly, slowly come down. You might find a bad egg in the bunch here or there, but this method really should work for preserving eggs for a year to a year and a half. Like I said, after eight months, you might start finding an egg that isn't the greatest here and there, but that's not a huge deal, especially if you're truly out of eggs over the winter. It's better to have some and find a rotten egg here or there than to have none at all. So I didn't even get through all in my basket here. I still have more, more eggs in here, and I actually have another whole basket sitting on the other side of my counter, but there's a lot of dirty eggs in there, so I'll have to put those in the fridge, dig through, find the clean ones. I think I can... I have enough though to fill up another gallon jar and this is just the extra eggs from this week so let's see it's end of august like i said days are getting shorter hens don't lay as much when we go into you know colder colder months and shorter days all right guys well thank you for watching i make new videos every week on motherhood homesteading and life here on our farm so be sure to click subscribe and hit the like button before you go i will see you next week